Ah, uh, nothing beats a little bit of gardening. Hey, what's that? I haven't seen that before. Jazzy's. Jazzy's Cafe Bar, record sales. What's a music shop doing in the middle of a forest? Hmm. Oh well, let's go and check it out. Uh, coming. Oh, this is snazzy. Little bar section, music sales over there. Let's go have a look. On sale. Ah, oh, that sounds good. Ah, oh, I've got all this. Oh, I've got all this too. Why don't they ever have anything new? Hmm. <gasps> new releases. Ooh, let's check it out. Oh, look at all these new records. Oh, I need to buy the whole set. <gasps> Reserved. Reserved? Hey, mate, can I buy these? Nah, sorry, dude. Those aren't for sale yet. What, none of them? Yeah, man. They're just some samples we got shipped in from creative mode, but you can't get them in survival yet. What, even this broken one? Yeah, it's really weird. It came like that. There was actually supposed to be another disc, but it didn't arrive for some reason. So, you mean they've added all these exciting new discs to the game, but didn't make a way for anyone to get them unless you're in creative mode? Basically, yeah. And when did you say they're coming to survival? Uh, not sure. Uh, I think like at least three months. Three months? Yeah, sorry dude, but I can like sign you up to our newsletter if you want. And nah, don't worry about it. I guess I'll just have to wait. Hello everybody, welcome back to Minecraft The Journey, the survival let's play series where we upgrade this survival world around me through all of the historical versions of Minecraft, hopefully all the way up to the latest modern day release. In this version we are in Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release 2 and we've been discovering all sorts of new things that have been added to this version of the game. This is part of the adventure update, preparing ourselves for the impending Minecraft 1.0 release coming up very very soon. Before we get into things today, there's a little bit of housekeeping I want to do. As I play this game, things change and things need to be addressed, and I want to run through some of those today and get them all out of the way. The first thing I wanted to look at was our negatively stacked fuel, and you might remember in Beta 1.8 pre-release 1, we exploited a bug with the crafting bench which allowed us to create negative count stacks, and what that meant was that we could have coal or any other item really in a negative stack count. As long as it was a consumable, the game would subtract one from the value of the stack, and if the value of the stack was zero, by subtracting one, it would go to minus one, and so on and so forth. So these furnaces have been working away for a long time, and I've been using them quite a lot. So they're now down to 12 pieces of coal each. What that means is that the stack count has actually gone all the way down to minus 127, rolled over to positive 127, and it's been counting down ever since. And by the time we consume all of this coal, these coal stacks are just going to disappear. But up here in the inventory room, I do have a few more that are still working. Up in the ceiling here I have a few furnaces tucked away just for some convenient smelting whenever I need it. And these furnaces here still happen to have some coal in there and as you can see the stack count is 120 and that's because these stacks of coal have reached minus 127, rolled over to 127 positive and are now starting to count down. So it's pretty unusual to see a positive stack count number as high as that in Minecraft and like with the others eventually this coal will just disappear. I'd mentioned before that if you block with your sword, it makes it appear as if you're waggling your sword so when you greet other players in multiplayer, you can say hello to them just like this. But it never worked in third person. But now, it does! Oh, waggly. I think you all know that I went through great effort to get each type of the new villager mob into this little pen here within the game. And I recently commented on how Mysteriously, some of my villagers seem to have duplicated. In fact, I had two butchers. Now I seem to have two clerics. And what's worse, I have seen multiple librarians. Now I only see one. But what's even more strange and worrying is that my butcher and my blacksmith seems to have gone missing as well. And the farmer has been missing for a very long time. In fact, I think the farmer switched professions mysteriously 
and turned itself into a cleric. So I'm a little bit worried that we only have three villagers here for some reason, even though it was only the other day that I'm pretty sure I counted five or six. So I'm really a bit worried about this and I'm thinking we might have to do something about it in the near future. But right now, I'm not sure the cause of this. And I definitely know it's not zombies because zombies don't start attacking villagers until a future version. So I'm sad. The size of the fence post hitbox has changed. Even though it appears to be a full block, it's actually less and you can get in much closer to the fence post itself. And this has caused my poor pig farm to be a little bit less efficient than it was before. You see, previously with these fence post blocks, you could only get up to the very edge of them like this, but now you can actually get yourself right up next to them like this. And the undesired side effect is, as you can see, as the pigs walk across the water here, let me pop up here so we can get a better look. As the pigs walk across the water, they can just get up here on this ledge here instead of falling into the water chute and going down into the, let's call it a cooking chamber. It just slows down the farm. They eventually do make their way there, but it's just a small imperfection that I have to live with. What's even more unusual about this is that it works on these fence posts, but not on the fence gate. So let's say you're just walking right along the edge like this, you'll just suddenly stop because you can't actually slide along in front of the fence gate. You have to go round to the edge like this, as you can see. So it's all just a little bit weird. Mm. 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 There's also been a change to how the fence posts connect to different sorts of blocks within the game. Here you can see pre-release 1 compared to pre-release 2. Now it works for most blocks, not every block. And if you happen to be growing some pumpkins or some melons, then your fence posts are going to connect to them too, which is weird. The snow golems I put in these sentry towers didn't survive the night. RIP. There was this feature added which would give you extended reach with mobs, but I couldn't quite get it to work. And it turns out it's not in survival mode, it's a creative mode feature. So let's switch and check it out. Well, we've got plenty of passive mobs around here to choose from, so let's see exactly how this works. Obviously, I can reach you because you're right in front of me, but what about some of these pigs out here? What about you? Yes, I can reach you. That was at least, what, 12 blocks? And now again, and again, just how far can I reach? Oh, you're, oh, even from here. Wow, that is very, very far, even from here. However far that is, that is super duper far. I wonder if there's a way we can scientifically measure this. No, out of reach. We have our happy little victim here. I mean, our volunteer. I've also got this measuring tape. Now I'm gonna measure myself from, let's start from here, 10 blocks away, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to whack you. Yes, I can. I've also knocked you out of the pen. That's not good. Pop you back in, back in, back in. Thank you very much. Okay, let's try again from 20 blocks out. Can I still whack you? Yes, I can. Okay, can we do it from 30? Now, I think this is probably the range limit, but yes, I can still hit you from 30. Okay, let's try. Let's try 31 blocks away. Still 32 blocks away. Yes, we can still hit you. Okay, surely not. Surely 33, 33. So, oh yes, okay. I would say that the range is about 32 because of the imprecision of the blocks. Nice one, buddy. Thanks for helping. You get to live today. Pumpkins are finally renewable after all this time. I can finally get pumpkins. Oh, can't see very much here. Pumpkins are now renewable because you can craft a pumpkin back into pumpkin seeds just by placing it up here and we get pumpkin seeds back. And that's a good thing because that was actually my last pumpkin. I make it a habit to pick them up whenever I see them out in the wild because so far we haven't been able to farm them. So I should now be able to plant them down here and make this farm into a melon and a pumpkin farm as it was always planned. So let's just do a quick harvest like this and I'll replant the melons on one side and then we'll dig up those stems over there and create a pumpkin farm on the other. Oh, I'm so excited. Ha! 
We're gonna let these little baby shoots grow up, sprout some pumpkins, harvest them, and then use the seeds from those to replant the rest of this section. Then we should have a full complement of pumpkins and melons. Over here at the Beta Lake area, a place we haven't been for quite a little while, this area has been constantly plagued by problems. Right behind me are some mystery chunks, which have been producing pigs like you wouldn't believe. There's a whole episode on that, and if you haven't seen it, go search for pig problems and you'll see exactly what was going on. Back at the ravine base, we also had some misplaced chunks, which we fixed in a couple of episodes ago, but it turns out that the reason that this pig population chunk behind me over here is suffering from problems is exactly the same reason. There's a chunk that's miscategorized in the game. It's like a library book being placed on the wrong shelf when it should exist somewhere else in the library. One of the chunks way off in that direction over there was set in the game's region files with the coordinates of this chunk over here which produces all of the pigs. So what I think was happening is that every time I would load that chunk, and it's right on the fringes of where the world would load, every time that chunk would load into memory, the game sort of thinks that it should be over here. And maybe there was a pig in it, or some pigs in it, or pigs tried to spawn in it, or something, and that caused them to spawn over here instead. And that exploded the populations. But it was a relatively easy fix once I understood what was going on. And this was my problematic chunk here. This is chunk 2118 and NBT Explorer says that this should be in the world at chunk location 5318. But if we have a look down here at its X position and Z position, we can see that this doesn't match. And if we look at a healthy chunk like the one right above it, you can see that this one should be in the world at 5317. And sure enough, here it is, X and Z position 53 and 17. And this was somehow confusing the game and causing changes in one chunk to appear in another chunk, and I think that's what was causing all of that pig mayhem. So why was this one stored with the incorrect location? I don't know. All we need to do is fix these X and Z coordinates here and make them match what they should be. So that's 53 for that one and 18 for that one. If we save that region file now, this should solve the problem. And so far, so good. I mean, there's a couple of remnant pigs out there from previous experiences, but so far everything seems to be good. Although I'll have to keep my eye on this because the problem does come and go and I don't really know the cause. So hopefully this has fixed it and we can get back to normal. Ah, the old mansion. Now there was a question of whether you can breed dogs, or I guess wolves, with the new breeding mechanics, so let's sneak around to the side of the house and see if we can breed up Bones and Jumpy, who are still here, being looked after, I guess, by Bugmare, who took over my mansion for official civic duties, or something like that, he said anyway. Let's see if we can breed you two up. Hello! Been a little while. Right click. No. Right click. No, it doesn't look like the breeding mechanic extends to these mobs. Maybe, no, I didn't think so. Well, perhaps in the future, we'll just wait and see. Now, unfortunately, we can't stay here. Let's head back to the ravine. At some point, the ability to run and jump whilst holding down the space bar got fixed. I'm not sure when, I just found it out. Back at last, and I did want to quickly mention that I have moved back to Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release to official, we're no longer using the Cauldron mod version, and that means that our cauldrons that were here in the modded version of pre-release 2 have now been deleted, and they would have been deleted if we'd upgraded to pre-release 3 anyway. So we'll just leave this area here as a reminder of what the cauldron brewing could have been, and wait until it gets replaced with something else. I think that covers everything for the little list of changes and updates for all of the things we've been exploring within the game, but there are still a few things to look at for Beta 1.9 pre-release 2 that I want to have a look at in this chest here. First, if we hover over the items you might notice a new purple border around the tooltip, I guess that just helps visualise the text there, but you might also notice that these golden apples have a new kind of shimmering effect, known as the glint, and this is being introduced as part of the enchanting system which will be added in a very near update, but this is the first time we've seen it in game, and the reason that the golden apple shows this glint is because I guess technically it's enchanted with regeneration, because when you eat the golden apple you get the regeneration effect. But what's strange about this new glint effect in this version, and I'm not sure how long this will persist for, but notice how it's shimmering here in the chest. As soon as I lift it up, it just goes back to normal. 
The glint doesn't work when you pick up and move the item around, nor does it actually work if you hold the item in your hand. In my hotbar here you can see that it has no glint at all, so I don't know why it only works in chests, and it certainly doesn't work on the ground either. So you wouldn't know that this thing has an enchantment until- oh! Oh. These things are still glitchy. I forgot about that. I better put this away safely. I didn't know they were still duplicating though. That's interesting. Anyway, it's time to put this back in the chest. And there, the glint is reapplied. We'll explore all of this properly when enchanting gets added, but until then, let's leave them here. Let's get back to the new music discs which were added into this version. As we know, these discs were only added in creative mode. I don't know why this was, but it wasn't until release 1.1 that these new discs became even obtainable in survival. That didn't make much sense to me, considering the team was getting ready for the major release coming up, so did they just forget about this? I don't know, who knows. But it was about a month prior to pre-release 2 when C418 had announced that there would be new music being added to the game. You people demand more music and I will oblige. A total of 9 new music discs were added to the game, but there were actually supposed to be 10. So what happened to this missing mystery disc? Well. As you can see, all of the discs have fairly simple names, all lowercase titles made up of just one word. But there was actually one more track which was going to be added, called Where Are We Now? And by looking at the game logs, you can actually see the game loading this new track in, but it wasn't working in the game because of a technical issue. Notch said, I had trouble getting Where Are We Now to play because of the spaces in the name. He did also say that he was working on it, but actually this issue didn't get fixed until over a year later, and the track was renamed to Wait, and then finally added in release 1.4.4, so I guess we won't hear it for a while. Well, since we are here, why don't we have a look at the ones that we have? I'm going to have a little bit of a sneak peek of some of these records. Let's go over to the listening station over here. Let's see if we can do 9 tracks in 90 seconds. Well with all of that we're pretty close to the end of Minecraft Beta 1.9 pre-release 2 now, and there's just one more major feature that was added to this version which we'll check out in the next episode. But until then, that's the end of today's episode, so thank you so much for watching, and an extra special thank you to my patrons for supporting me, thank you all so much. I'll see you all in the next episode, until then, this has been BugmanCX, you've been watching Minecraft The Journey. Bye bye.